Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Cobra, and welcome to the video where I teach you how to use the future library. There isn't a huge amount to talk about with this, but it is actually a really useful thing to know. The future library essentially allows you to use upcoming features uh, of Python in earlier Python versions. So in the last video we tackled typing annotations, and I showed you that you know the new syntax could be used in 3.10 and up. However, it was available in 3.7 and up, through the future library, and I'll kind of show off how that works in this video. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider like it to let me know, and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos in the series. Anyway, yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into it. And we are back in last video's code. Now you may be wondering why, and that's because we're not really going to be coding anything new in this video. We're mainly going to be exploring uh, the Dunder future library, as I said last time. But I'm also going to uh, quickly demonstrate that stuff actually changes with this. So. In the last video I said, you know, this um, uh, this type hinting syntax was new for 3.10, however if you imported um, annotation from future you could use it as early as 3.7. I didn't actually demonstrate that you could do that, so now if we comment that out we start getting this error saying alternative syntax for unions requires Python 3.10 or newer. But if we bring it back, whoops, if we bring it back, then suddenly it's fine we can use it again. Now the reason for this is because the future library sort of adds optional stuff that you can use that isn't fully implemented into the main library yet. And I will kind of explain what I mean by that. So if you're on Visual Studio Code, you can hover over the future, press and hold control and click and it will take you to the file. And now we are in the future file. We're looking at kind of what this is. And most of this is, is all comments. However, you do have a, a little bit of a list down here and you have all these constants here that we don't really need to worry about and all this stuff here that we also don't need to worry about it's mainly just all of this stuff down here so these variables are what we're actually importing so when we were importing annotations we were importing this and it is an underscore feature object and there are three uh, different variables that get passed into this so the first is a, a quote five tuple that's how they describe it with the initial version in which you could use it. So you could import the annotations from Python version 3.7.0.beta1. Uh, beta one. So from the first beta, so you couldn't do this in the alpha, but in the betas of Python 3.7, you could begin using these annotations. And this second one is an estimate, and it does say an estimate, of when the feature will be implemented into, you know, proper Python without having to import it in the future, which in this case is 3.10.0 alpha zero. Interestingly, in in 3.10 beta four, this is actually changed to 3.11 alpha one. I don't know why, because it, it does work in 3.10. So I'm not entirely sure why that is, um, but that's an interesting one. Uh, so you can see kind of, there have been a few of these. So the division in, in Python two, especially this was quite a big one. So if you wanted, uh, the slash to do float divisions, uh, or if you wanted a single slash to return a float, um, you needed to either have uh, either end of the operation be a float, or you had to from future import division. So you had a division changed um, in Python 3, as you can see this is when it was actually implemented, Python 3.0. Uh, however, they I kind of realize that this should really be the behavior from 2.2 alpha 2 so you could import the division and do stuff that way anyone writing code in 2.7 probably has um has this import i know when i did my robotics module for university we used 2.7 despite the fact that it was already out of date uh, this was in like 2021 this was this year and we were still using python 2.7 for that module because robotics kind of sucks in that way and i had to import division from future to be able to do float division uh which was kind of weird um there's not really an enormous amount to talk about with this but it is it is good to come back to this every now and then to see what's kind of new so obviously the annotations is the newest one um you know maybe in a in, in 3.11 or something, there'll be another one that comes up here, or maybe even in, in the 3.10 release candidates. I'm not sure if that ever even happens. Yeah, with every new Python version, it's always good to come back here and just see what you can like experiment with now, because obviously with the annotations we could use since uh, these since 3.7, uh, I didn't actually know these were coming in until the release notes for Python 3.10 came out, and then I, you, know, you can import them for 3.9. So this kind of gives you an, an idea of what's coming in Python before they actually mention anything, but obviously not everything is here. 
so that's really all there is regarding the futures to talk about. There isn't a huge amount. However, one that has caught, probably caught your attention is this Barry as FLUFL uh, one. When I can find my mouse, there it is. Uh, this one here that is expected to launch in Python 4.0.0 Alpha 0. Um, then this did actually kind of lead me to believe that Python were, or the Python Software Foundation were already developing um, what they would call Python 4000 at the time, which is all the code name stuff for it. Uh, and I went, uh, I kind of went looking this up to see what it was all about. Um, and it turns out that it was just an April Fool's joke, but it does actually do something in the code, which is actually kind of funny. So the PEP specifically for this is PEP 401, the BDFL retirement. As you can see, the status is April Fool, uh, which is kind of funny. Essentially, the abstract of it is that the BDFL, uh, having shepherded Python development for 20 years, officially announces its retirement effective immediately. Following a unanimous vote, his replacement is named. So it's basically this huge kind of... Um, April Fool's joke surrounding this person called Barry, who is the friendly language uncle for life, um, who has decided that uh, the diamond operator is superior to the exclamation mark equals operator, um, and that it should be implemented in Python from 3.1. To help transition this feature, a new feature, uh, oh, sorry, a new future statement from future import Barry as friendly language uncle for life has been added, which does actually exist and does actually work. So I'm going to quickly shut it off. However, it only works in interactive mode for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why, uh, but you need to go into the interactive mode for this. And from future, well, actually, I'll, I'll show you what it is originally first. So you have, you know, print five does not equal three, and that will print true. However, if you do from future uh, import uh, Barry as uh, Fluffle, I keep calling it Fluffle. It's not Fluffle. Oh, it is Fluffle, actually. Hey, I did. I did get it. I was. I was looking at it earlier. I was like, "That's." I've been messing that up the whole time. No, it's fine. Um, so you do print five diamond three, and that now also works. I believe this works too. Oh no, it doesn't. Uh, with Barry's BDFL use um, the diamond operator instead of the exclamation mark equal. So that actually completely uh, removes that entirely. Um, however, you cannot use this in scripts, presumably to stop people from actually using it. Um, if you try and use it in a script, you'll just get a standard syntax error. But the interactive mode, it does actually work, which I think is really funny. See, this is how the futures work. This is how they add stuff, and you can even change stuff as well. Um, as I said before, it's always good to kind of have a look at this library, every new version that comes out to make sure that nothing has changed or, you know, nothing has been added. Um, you can get a sneak peek of certain new things before they actually come out. But yeah, that's all I really wanted to mention with the future. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, or you can join the Discord server using the link in the description. Uh, with that, I would like to thank my amazing patrons on screen now. One pound a month and you can be on that screen too. And I will see you next time where we talk about async. So we're going to be, you know, a lot more serious with the next video. We're going to be talking about asynchronous operations and how to get those going and stuff. So I'll see you for that.